So you're trying to build your social media network. How do you do that? Well, the new, one of the latest things out there is called Clubhouse. And we've got the man himself called Clubhouse Jeff. So let's get into the show. So hi, Jeff. Hey, Bruce. How are you? So Clubhouse is not really your first name? No, it's not. <laughs> I figure you, you can probably have a lawsuit there having them take your name for, from you and, and creating a whole platform. Exactly. Yeah, I can't, couldn't believe it. When I've been going around his clubhouse all these years and all of a sudden they just launched an app named after me. I, I couldn't. Yeah. No, it's actually Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Ettringer. So um, so you kind of jumped on this full force um, when you first got onto it. And this conversation is going to be not only about Clubhouse, but also about social media in general, because the strategies you use to build your, your following on Clubhouse can be used on any platform, really. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's been interesting because when when I got the name, I, essentially on the platform for Clubhouse, uh, I was just one of many Jeffs. And so then uh, when someone said, no, not not you, Jeff, they called out someone and someone else answered. And they said, no, Jeff, the, the guy who knows about Clubhouse, Clubhouse Jeff. And so I changed my name on the platform, the creator name to Clubhouse Jeff, just to see what it would look like. I was like, okay, what's this going to look like? Yeah. And when it changed, it, it, I wasn't able to change it back because it was, uh, you couldn't change your creator name back at the time. Now you can. Uh, but since everybody got to know me as Clubhouse Jeff over the couple of weeks, I think it was about three weeks, uh, mm -hmm. I decided not to change it back. But I realized it doesn't matter. I mean, but just being that one Jeff, they'd be like, Jeff, uh, they wouldn't know how to get a hold of me. So I think having something that's remarkable or something that's unique, a unique yep. identifier. And, and because that was visible uh, and it's your name, I think that helped out tremendously for uh, some of the just recognition instead of being a Jeff. And then the photo as well. And I think that's true for any social media, right? If you have something unique about you and they can see that right off the bat. And even if you're just just normal Jeff. Yep. So here we go. Here's some suggestion. YouTube Bruce. Yeah, YouTube Bruce. There you go. There that's you go. Because there's so many other, other Bruce's out there. There's an old Monty Python skit uh, called Bruce's. Yes. And it's like, okay, your name Bruce. Okay. Yeah, Bruce. Uh, Bruce. And it's like, okay, do you mind if we call you Bruce? Because it gets too confusing if your name isn't Bruce. <laughs> I love that. I think when when I thought about it, I was like, okay, once you once you become that too, I was really worried that there might be some unattended consequences uh, to having a creator name. So I reached out to Loria Petrucci. I reached out to other people um, who've had uh, basically nicknames and, and names that they've had a creator name mm -hmm. and aliases. And how did that affect them? And how did they use it to their advantage? And and it was it was very effective, but. You know, once you get off platform, it's like, what? Yeah, I wouldn't be called Clubhouse Jeff. I'm Jeff from Make Anything Easy. So yep. my company, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's also going deep as opposed to going wide. I felt that uh, on most of my platforms, I am, well, maybe knee deep into five or six platforms. Yeah. And I kind of looked across your, your uh, social media, and you've got very few following on Facebook and and YouTube, and we'll talk about YouTube a little bit later, but but you went really deep and really quick into Clubhouse because uh, we've been on Clubhouse maybe give or take oh, two weeks. Oh, at the time we had no, I've been on since last year December. Right. So oh, have yeah. I. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is I started oh. in December as well. Yeah, yeah. But you started like maybe two weeks earlier. Yep. But again, it's the time you spent on it and the people you've connected with it because being on, on clubhouse, you've been give, give, give mm. and very little take. Yep. I haven't asked for anything really. And, and so one time, uh, and that's, and that's actually how we kind of uh, started connecting Bruce is uh, because I, I still, I'm still giving, I, you know, I don't, at this point, I don't monetize on clubhouse at all. There's, I, I just really, I felt at home and I felt I could be my authentic self there and just start to have conversations. And I've always felt it feels like the whole globe is my family. Now mm -hmm. uh, I have a huge family anyway. And so once I, once I got on there, I was like, okay, this is a way for me to be my authentic self 
and continue to give to people and make these authentic connections. Um, and so uh, on my YouTube channel, so on Facebook, I have, I think, 6,000 or something for followers and uh, maybe about the same on Instagram and uh, LinkedIn. I have a bunch um, and lots of people all over. But on Clubhouse, it grew so fast and I got to, I think I'm almost to 9,000 uh, followers currently. Um, and it, it went quick. So when we met, I thought, okay, I have a YouTube channel. So I started my company, Make Anything Easy. Yep. And I haven't posted a single video to my YouTube. And I thought what I needed about 25 more followers in order to get my custom URL channel on YouTube. So I thought I'll just go on and create a room on Clubhouse and just ask yep. if people will follow me. Yep. And boom, I, I got to 100. And, and I got there so then I could create my custom channel. So that was the, the one ask that I've had from Clubhouse. Yeah, I held off. I waited until you get to 99 before I followed you. So I, so I am your 100th. You Bruce is my 100th follower on YouTube. It's going to go down in history. So but actually, yeah. what you really need to, to emphasize there is you had no content on YouTube. I don't. I have zero, zero content. And and the idea is that I'm going to start posting videos like this video and other ones and, and be able to add to that. Um, And that's kind of the idea behind make it. It's not kind of, it is the idea behind my company, make anything easy is literally uh, finding some, some ways of doing things, finding some experts like Bruce for YouTube. So how do you make mm -hmm. YouTube easy? And then Bruce is the expert and he's able to help me. So he actually helped me out on my YouTube video. So you definitely want to ask Bruce and, yeah. and reach out to him for any of that stuff. Um, but he helped me tremendously and just going through and, and stepping through it. And, and, uh, he has some cool instructional stuff there. And um, it's about edutainment, I think. And that's yeah. really where social media has taken us. And I think that's also how I joined the room was you're saying trying to get 100 followers or 100 subscribers is what they call them on YouTube. And subscribers, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every platform has their own different uh, lingo. But yeah, so I figure I, I join in because I knew uh the ins and outs of youtube yeah and that's how we really got connected first is because i know you've been all over the place but I, we never actually were on the same stage together no and it's so interesting because i'm on artificial intelligence and i'm in artificial intelligence on rooms uh as well and we we're discussing uh, the voice and how to use it in artificial intelligence using virtual reality um and augmented reality for like firefighters with huds and using uh oh um yeah <laughs> using different information to be able to then pull it in i'm not going to use a bunch of acronyms but well, uh, heads up display is a hud yeah 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 exactly and, and, and so, yeah yeah uh, this is one of your uh, favorite co-hosts uh, on Clubhouse. Yep, exactly. And I think that that when you realize, you like I just did an international room this morning, and for people who don't understand because you're listening to it and you're not on Clubhouse yet, it's basically drop-in audio. You, you're on a conference call and anybody from in the world all over the globe comes mm -hmm. on to Clubhouse. And you open up a room and it's a conference call. They come in and start talking, but they have an avatar. They have a, a, an image of themselves. So I like to look at the image, kind of feel what the person you know is about from their photo that they're picking yep. and then read their profile. And you can go to their Instagram. And I, I mean, I was just talking, uh, we talked Japanese. I learned some Korean today. I learned some uh, different languages from uh, Thai and we were all speaking and they were all over the world. So it doesn't matter what time it is, which is also an effective thing. We, I think you wanted to talk about schedules too. So that's something that you have to learn to adapt for, yes. but it's just, it's so powerful. So do you sleep? Uh, yeah, I do actually once in a while. <laughs> I've always had this energy when I uh, built and raced solar cars at Iowa State University, uh, built a replica of the world's first computer. Uh, I was working at Ames Lab. Um, and then the Small Business Development Center, I always just have learned to, um, and I've always just slept about yeah. six hours for, for me, but um, but my schedule has been disrupted because other people are, are in a different cycle completely. Uh, so I've had to learn how to um, go back to those uh, times to be energetic. And I track my energy based upon the food that I eat and everything else. And then I'm able to be more effective. Because you've also traveled the world. I, I noticed your uh, your clubhouse profile picture, uh, which we saw um, in the intro. Yeah, that's David Rams took that picture. And it's in the, in the middle of the river, right? 
Which, which river is it? It's it, he. So as a joke, he put down that as the Amazon River, the Amazon, okay. and it's actually the uh, uh, here in Atlanta, the Chatt Chattahoochee River. And so he goes, oh, it looks like you're in the Amazon, like you're forging, you know, like you're for. And we were, we're literally in the middle of a river. There's kayakers going by and we're in the center of this with the rapids around us. And I started laughing when this kayaker was like, what are you doing here? And David's an amazing photographer. He's holding up his camera and he almost, you know, he's like in the middle of this river. And that's when he snapped the picture. And so I, I just thought everybody likes the fact that I'm having an authentic laugh and David captured the moment perfectly. So again, back down here, world travel, where have you been? You've been to, uh, Oh Europe my God. Countries? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, I've lived, uh, Iowa, Milwaukee, New Orleans, um, Aruba on the Island. And this is lived, uh, Houston, uh, lived in Dubai, uh, lived in, um, Atlanta now. And, uh, since 2009, but um, I've traveled to Morocco, Italy, um, Spain, went up into France on a motorcycle, uh, drove uh, in all of Ireland, uh, the UK, uh, did a little bit there, did um, uh, Isle of Man, absolutely love it. I'm missing it. I want to go for the races again. Uh, and then I actually did Morocco was really cool on little monkey bikes, uh, 50cc motorcycles up into the High Atlas Mountains, into the desert. Uh, South Africa, um, India, uh, the highest road in the world, 18,800 feet near Mount Everest, um, not too far from there. And I just want to keep on going and, and find some more uh, countries and, and travel all of Europe and, and other wonderful places and start to connect with these people that I've already connected with on Clubhouse. So there's a lot of friends in Germany and Sweden and Japan. So it should be fun. I think uh, the short time I've known you, uh, you've got that outgoing personality. So no matter where you are, the matter where they where you they could drop you in the world, you probably <laughs> easily make friends and 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 start conversations. Yeah, and and I think that comes from riding motorcycles since I've been doing that. And my parents and huge family. I mean, two hundred and twenty members of the gigantic family. Um, and just realizing that we are all connected. Um, and being on a motorcycle by yourself as a solo traveler, when you arrive. At a location you're vulnerable and and relying upon those people to help you in any way that they can or do anything um but that's also helped me with my consulting so i consult businesses mm -hmm. um building an app um right now as well and uh working with the team and then also i do studios so i've been building a, a studio for ceos and executives to help them look like cnn so, so that's right over here there you go actually i'll push on the uh let's turn it on really quick or not turn it on, but just make it so it boots up. But that's something that that I've been doing uh, as something, a fun project uh, to then allow you. And I'm not using those cameras right now because they're really high end cameras. Uh, but and I just have it switched. So, yep. But yep. you've got a good microphone, though. That's it. Because oh, a lot yeah. of people these days. Uh, no, I have a good microphone. Are you using the microphone at all on Clubhouse or are you just using um, the... Actually, I can, at times I do, just depending on which one. So I have a Rodecaster Pro here. I've got a, a Mix Pre-6. I've got all these different um, uh, sound yeah. um, and micro... I've got boom mics and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, one Shot thing I just... Uh, I, I had... This is called an iRig. So what it does, on, on one end, you can plug it into your phone and you Oops. can just plug it into your phone like this. And, uh, and on the other end, it hooks up to a, to a microphone like this. Yeah. Yep. So, yep, you can do it this way. So you have it all connected. Oops. So the iRig 2 is the one that I've been using. So that one with this. Yep. This one's called one. iRig Pre. Yeah. And so. is that one working well on Clubhouse? Yeah. Um, I think I bought it because it was designed for the iPhone. Yeah, and it's working great. Um, cool. I use it uh, on some live shoots as well. So when you're, if you're going live from your phone, as opposed to just um, using your phone audio, you can yeah. use a professional microphone. Professional, exactly. And that's where that's the difference is the XLR versus a USB. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can't, it makes a huge difference when you start playing around with those things. I mean, just microphone presence when you're on clubhouse or anything right. else. And if you get it at the right distance and then you can. Just yeah. 
you just I just lost you. No, really, you did. I lost you. So oh, yeah, no, I I, I pressed the uh, mute button. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the microphone I've got is this one. So if you if you get really close to this one, and what's what's really weird though is it's got this place, this blue little tin to it that tells you it's on. Oh, so that's put this, cool. I've got to put the windscreen on so so it doesn't uh, give me that blue tint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you use it as a shade. <laughs> yeah. So otherwise, you got a little bit of blue. So a little bit of. Uh, that's yo. Oh, I see it. Oh, it's almost like a laser pointer. You got to yeah. watch out. <laughs> I don't know why they put the. I guess it's designed to say the light the uh, the mic is on, but you can't turn it off because even when I'm doing professional videos. Yeah. You know how you have that little record light that goes on. To right. Say you're, you're you're on. The first thing I do on any camera I have, I, I turn that light off. So that they don't know when you're actually recording or not. Yep. And then, and then they don't get nervous when you hit the record button. Oh, that's a good idea. I did that with uh, cameras when I traveled um, and we're doing some documentary work and things like that. If you can cover those things up, it helps out. Yep. You're yep. right. A piece, because... of, a piece of black tape also helps. Yeah, it's, yeah. It may, I don't know if you can put some have the on that thing, but <laughs> you should maybe even use that mesh and just stick it on the front of it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That might work. And wrap it, you know, a foam piece or something. So as far as building your community, um, you said how much time have you been spending on Clubhouse to build this? Um, and, and I've been mindful about when I spend it and then what rooms I go into and how you go into those rooms. Um, make sure that I become a speaker. I come up on the front. But I've been getting to know the people that are running the rooms and genuinely adding value. When I come in there, I'm like, okay, for artificial intelligence and voice, uh, how worried are you worried about the captured, uh, the, the microphone? Uh, when you get the ambient noise, how does that affect the voice recognition? And we're discussing that they actually don't need to listen to the words or translate them in order to understand the inflections for the individuals to then figure out their emotions. They don't need to translate it to see what words are being used. It's the way the voice and the tonality of the person speaking. They can tell with a certain amount of um, uh, certainty whether or not that person like would pay the bill that they're calling about for a bill collector. Um, whether or not they would feel, you know, if they're feeling scared or excited or those things, because they're similar, but are, we can tell uh, as humans what, uh, slightly what the difference is. Um, and so as you go into those rooms and discuss that or, or just have a simple discussion about how's your day today uh, and genuinely connect. A, a guy had a guy uh, today. He was absolutely I was doing a room uh, uh, with my friend and, and there's a guy that came in and did my dessert based upon my personality and gave me a dessert. And it was absolutely wonderful. It was Alan. And uh, and then there's just people like when I do rooms with Pitter, she's uh, a photographer and she's absolutely amazing. And uh, we just start talking to people and telling them how to use Clubhouse and how to use it. And I think that helped, too, is, uh, you know, helping somebody brand new to feel comfortable and know how to use the technology. Uh, that's what make anything easy is about is how do you use technology in order to make a difference? What are those things that you're doing that are unintended? on an app, mm -hmm. how do you break those down? And from learning from the robotics automation controls and all the things I've worked on over years, how do you, when you touch that screen and do those things, what is it that ultimately comes out the other end and what actions are taken? Uh, and I like to say there's lots of pot pies. If you touch something, you're not sure what's behind it until you open it. So a pot pie, it could be a chicken pot pie, it could be a beef pot pie, a vegetable. So until you open that pot pie, which essentially you've broken it, yeah. now you can see what's inside of it. So that's always a bad HMI design, but I've always probed all of those apps. So I was like, oh, cool, there's a bunch of cool stuff behind Clubhouse and how do I teach people? So that that grew my following is, is my willingness to jab, jab, jab and continue to do that. So the other analogy would be life is a, a box of chocolates. Life's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Although actually, if you do know uh, all those chocolate boxes, there is a code on the top of uh, in the squiggles. So if you know how to read the code, you can tell which, what's in, inside the chocolate. Exactly. And it depends on what brand too and what they're doing. Yep. Yeah. So I think the pot pie analogy is probably better because – Although I, I know two types, there's a beef pot pie and a chicken pot pie. I'm and vegetable. Like, 
So you've got a 50 50 chance with those, unless you go with a fish pot pie or oh, a, or I, that a pot pie. That reminds me of empanadas when I was in um, Aruba and they had these empanadas and these breakfast things. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I just assumed that all of them were the same because the ones that I bought were like these wonderful beef with uh, mm -hmm. stuff in them. And so I went to the natural uh, pool and the natural bridge that was supported um, on the North coast. And there's a small shop there. And I was like, Oh wow, I get, I'm going to get a pot pie or get this, this empanada. Or, I forget what it's called now. But I didn't know what was in it. I bought it and started eating it, and it was fish. And and I got sick. So I was like, oh, no. So, so yeah, that's a bad analogy. Like, you can really get sick from some of those pot pies. But, yep. yeah, definitely. Fish is not not my favorite for, for uh, pot pies. <laughs> there's, actually, there's a restaurant here that has, has great uh, fish tacos. Oh, yeah. But uh, that's a whole other story. So uh, okay. we've got uh, New Styles here. This is an issue with uh, with Clubhouse. We'll address that off air. Um, you can DM me or or DM Jeff. And, and yeah, we'll help you out. definitely. Yeah, you can definitely. Clubhouse Jeff is the way you find me. Yep. Or Jeff Ettringer, E-T-R-I-N-G-E-R. -E and so um, what have you learned, Uh communicating with these people or with, with people yeah, and growing yeah. your community community on clubhouse. And are you all in on clubhouse? Are you still active on Facebook and LinkedIn? Oh my gosh. What I've learned is that I haven't had time to respond to all these people. I mean, I literally with 9,000 people reaching out to me um, and I'm, you know, I'm following back 2,500 which is the most you can. I have not had, a, I'm, I've, I've got 400, probably now 500 DMs people asking me and you, and luckily you kept on reaching out to me, Bruce. Otherwise we wouldn't even be here uh, because you, you were persistent enough to continue. I have other people that want to interview me as well. And then there's a bunch on Facebook and then LinkedIn and I'm getting more people viewing LinkedIn. I've been doing business, um, uh, hosting business rooms with Isabella and she's awesome. And we're having these really mindful discussions about business and about, how to, you know, as a business leader and the leadership roundtable, how are you um, effectively making an impact on those people around you in business, in real life? And so it's become difficult uh, to to manage a lot of that. And so I'm having to rearrange how I'm going to do that and and probably have to get someone to help me with that. Yeah, I suppose if you start monetizing it, you can actually hire someone to take care of your social media and answer the phones and the DMs. Yeah, going to have to do something with a virtual assistant or someone to to be able to help me with that. And lots of other people have already done that, but I'm doing it just like, you know what? That's a great analogy is the YouTube channel. I started out with no videos whatsoever and I get 100 followers. And now I've got all the followers in, on Clubhouse and I don't have any structure uh, around it. So I'll definitely have to look into getting some help from uh, my wonderful people that, uh, uh, that I've uh, made connections with now. So let's see, is this your channel? Let me see if I, what, what channel I just picked up. Oh, that was my channel. Yeah. Um, just for, for those who have not yet subscribed to Jeff's channel, it is, have you gotten your name yet? Yeah, I got the name, Make Anything Easy. So YouTube forward slash Make Anything Easy. Um, and it's, yeah, I was I was so excited. And Bruce helped me get to that. And so that was wonderful. He's my hundredth subscriber. Yeah, because that was one of the, the um, criteria of getting a custom URL is yep. that you need a hundred subs su subscribers. Yeah, and I had already been on it for a while, um, and just since last year when I started uh, make anything easy, and then uh, started just building out my all my usernames and everything else, and uh, it's been it's been wonderful. Yep, and I think if I when I uh, look for you. On as Jeff Ettringer, um, some you, your interviews show up prior yep. to your actual channel and make. And this is where I need a, a producer as well. Yeah, someone to type in make anything easy, and then and then yeah, having someone to help you too. And uh, because this, this is what I do for other uh, other people is I, I yeah. produce and direct behind the scenes. So while they're talking to their guests. I'm yeah. the one behind the scenes uh, typing this stuff in. 
you know, that's something interesting, Bruce, that I did. I, and I start to realize in high school and uh, I, I did production and then I was actor and I was on stage, but then I would run the lights and the sound and I did all the sound for all these bands. And so that's how I know about the sound. And so when I'm helping people, I'm like, I didn't even realize the fact that I knew all this stuff from before. I just assumed everybody else knew how a computer works. Like when I built the replica of the world's first computer, I assumed, oh, everybody knows about these things, about electronics and uh, ones and zeros and bits and binary. But um, you start to realize that you're educating and able to pass that on to a lot of the other people that I meet. So actually it was easier to find you because um, I can't find you on um on searching YouTube. So I guess yeah. the best way to do is, is search your website, which is make anything easy. Yep. Dot com. And that has my YouTube channel on it. Yeah, there we go. So, so that we'll do it that way. And it has Facebook it has all my link. And then I made a tap link uh, that allows it to uh, go through. So uh, just tap link dot CC at Jeff Ettringer. So ET ringer, and then it uh, goes through to make anything easy. Yep. And it's probably Bruce, just literally, I turned it on yesterday, the YouTube custom channel. So I don't, it's probably not even in the search yet. And obviously we don't have that much content on it yet because this will be one of the videos that goes on there first. So here we go. So here is your website. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got your social media here, um, YouTube, and this is this medium. Or is that your? Oh, no, no, that's the tap link. So if you click okay, on that, that, yeah, if you actually click on that tap link, and then at the very top is the YouTube, and then the Clubhouse, uh, Jeff, and then yeah. So, but if you click on the YouTube channel, and then if you scroll down, I mean, I almost have too many things. There's make anything easy right there. Ah, there's my yeah. SEO, yeah, or the. Uh, so, actually, that, that that's my channel. I started doing doing what's called shorts. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a, there's an app like if, for those who are getting started on YouTube. Um, there is an app called uh, TubeBuddy. There's also VidIQ. Rob Balasabas, he's amazing. Yep. Yep. Yeah, which gave you the uh, the background. So here you are, um, and these are not your videos. These are your appearances, and so by creating a playlist, uh, and this is a strategy that that I've used with my clients is, if you haven't created your own content. Or even if you have, but you're doing things like this, like uh, interviews, share that with your audience so that they don't have to search all of YouTube to find your appearances. And so these are your appearances. Yeah. Oh, that's so so here, great. There, there's there's associates and influencers here, Stephanie Nielsen, Lynn Serrano, and uh, Nadia Bilchek. Yeah, Nadia Bilicek. Oh my gosh, CNN. She's amazing. That's when, when I spoke to her, uh, she's from CNN. And so when I spoke to her, it was just absolutely amazing. You can see that I didn't even have a monitor on the uh, on the studio yet. <laughs> so that's funny. Yeah, that's great. Look at I, I, I my hair was a little different than too. It's just because of that. I've realized that you know consistency is interesting. How you show up each time, you can be a little bit different. Um, but uh, but I'm always my authentic self, regardless of my hair or my clothes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Here's he's making everything Hitter! easier. Make anything and everything easy. Exactly. Thank you. Oh, she's, not, she's on site. Yep, she's on site doing a photo shoot today. So she's out doing it. Oh, here's one of my here's my, one of my raving fans from uh oh. from our, our locals who who sees me as a video expert. Yes. Oh so, my gosh, Snarf Foods. Hey, how's it going? So she uh, she's a lawyer turned candy maker. That see that okay. So we had a room, and I was with Delano in a room, and we we're doing the sexiest, the sexiest voice of Clubhouse, and we we're having these cool, cool discussions. But we did a room where we did from entrepreneur or from CEO or executive, an executive to transform to a um, uh, entrepreneur, and what are those transitions that you have to do? Because I was an executive and I transitioned into an entrepreneur. But were you an entrepreneur before that as a young kid? Or do, what What transpired you to do it? So when Snar Foods, when she did that, mm -hmm. I mean, is that something that she just jumped into? or uh, Her background is her uh, father-in-law uh, had a recipe. 
Oh, and it, it was a caramel recipe. And instead of letting the caramel recipe die, she took over and started producing it. Oh, at the same time being a lawyer. Wow. And then to the extent that she says, okay, I'm, let's make a business out of this. That's so and, cool. And the, uh, the avatar for the business is her father-in-law. That's a great idea. Like so, Chocolate Johnny. Uh, have you seen him on yeah, on? Yeah. yeah, I've known Chocolate Johnny for about six years, ever since you, the lab days. You're joking! Chocolate Johnny's my favorite man. He's doing chocolates, so he sent me some chocolates. It was absolutely the best chocolate I've ever had. Is perfection, <laughs> perfection chocolates. Yep. Just oh my gosh! Yeah, and, so he's he's definitely using the platform to enhance his brand. Yeah. And and you think about it, it's like the the platform uh, Clubhouse and any platform yeah. now. But I find myself not spending that much time on these other platforms, which is kind of scary, because you have to kind of figure out where you're going to spend your time. But being able to have that voice, like right now, I have to look presentable. Um, you know, you don't on Clubhouse. You could you could just be around in a T-shirt having a great discussion or yeah. working out at the gym. I met out here at the swimming pool, just hanging out. And I don't have to worry about it. I can just have a, a discussion and that forgiveness and the ability to, to, for everyone to go, Oh, it doesn't matter if there's background noise. Um, you know, as long as it isn't too, too terrible. We had a rooster crowing in uh, Thailand. I got to hear and we heard the, the rooster crow. And we're like, I said, Oh, no problem. Or a, a cat climbed up on this uh, lady's shoulder and was, was purring in the, uh, in the phone. And it was just the cutest thing. You're like, yeah, it's real life. People are doing laundry and they're doing all their things in real life and they're not having to worry about their, you know, presenting. Um, and that's where it's changed for uh, Zoom and for all the other things, too. So it's become much easier and people are moving from those Zoom meetings into Clubhouse afterwards to then continue a conversation that may be a little more authentic. And so Shelly is saying that uh, took, her, took her years to make the leap. Oh, and that's what, yeah, we were like, okay, what point did you jump? And was, were you pushed? Somebody was pushed and they said, and I just did it. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm okay. And, and uh, as opposed to making that decision on your own, yeah. I, I was an entrepreneur young on, really young, young on. I was an entrepreneur when I was young for my grandparents. Both my grandfathers were, were doing entrepreneurial things from a young age and, uh, and had a huge family um, and huge following. So they were selling and doing things on their farms and within their group and then just having lots of kids. And once I learned that skill, uh, it was more like, OK, well, you have control over this. You can control those things. But then, you know, I go into corporate world and I did lots of corporate things um, and, you know, did these amazing, amazing projects like contact lenses and uh, surgical sutures. And we're doing Rice Krispie treats and food and then beverage and just. Uh, as you get to see all these projects over the years um, and built a, a, a refinery, we, we rebuilt it after it blew up in Aruba. Um, just some cool stuff. You realize that, hey, an entrepreneur is the same thing. You use those people skills in order to effectively make a difference in the world. And and uh, the, but you you need a wider skill set, a little thicker skin. Yep. And the ability to be able to uh, withstand the highs and lows and then motivate yourself. Which is where that jack of all trades sometimes comes in handy, as opposed to someone who is laser focused on one skill. Yeah, because when you're an accountant and you're really good at it and and that's what you're doing, then you, you may not have those other skills. But it also can be a detriment too, Bruce, because when you're an entrepreneur, sometimes you want to do all those things and you don't know when to delegate or which things to yeah. delegate. So analyzing how much money it would cost for you to have somebody else do those things can be very effective, like um, just taking care of a certain thing. And you're like, if so, I can just pay that person to build that for me, yep. uh, to build my website. So I, I literally took and built that website on my own, learned WordPress in a, a couple days and put it together, slapped it up there. And I'm like, wow, maybe I should have a full on website or maybe not. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of going with it. I'm building the plane as I fly it for this business. Yep. My previous businesses, I didn't. I, I was a systems integrator and would go into huge factories and automate and put in manufacturing equipment to, and, uh, 
built these HMIs and human machine interfaces and all of those things. And now it's like, oh, this is social media. This is a lot different. I don't know this space as mm -hmm. well, uh, but well, I do, but. You've taken over. I mean, it seems like a natural to you. Yeah, well, thanks. Here, here's an offer if you like. If you like. Uh, she's got a choice between a um, chocolate covered uh, pretzels rods or a, um, it's kind of a, a, a trail, trail mix. Oh wow! And then the, I'll, I think her and her specialty is caramel um, caramel pa, uh, pizza. Okay, I definitely I, just because of the fact that it's a recipe, whatever that whatever that recipe is, I want to try it. My favorite is chocolate though, but I love caramel too, especially if it's that recipe that's the part of the brand. Um, that would be great. Thank you so much. Actually, um, here we go. Here's here's her website. Oh my gosh, that it looks is. amazing. Our foods. Our foods. Um, what a great name too. Oh, look at that killer yeah. caramel pizza. <gasps> Do we have a shot of her? Uh, her, her. Let me oh, see if I can. So they we're totally off topic here. We're no, 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 no. We're, we're right on topic. This is what, this is why, this is how I built my following Bruce is there one person at a time. Look, there's, there, there's your dad. That's great. It's seriously, you just connect with the person that you're with and she's here and we should connect with her and, and not worry about anybody else. And it makes a huge difference uh, on killer Clubhouse. Coffee. Killer caramel or yeah. Oh, pizza. Oh my gosh. And that is uh... so good. You snarf them down. That's a great yeah. tagline. Oh, M G you okay. it's, it's got green for St. Patrick's Day, which is coming up. I'm sold. I'm sold. That that has chocolate in it. It's chocolate and caramel. I, I'm I'm done. Yep. That's that's exactly if you're if if I could eat one of those, uh I definitely would go in and do some more workouts in the morning like I normally do. There you go. Thank you, Peter. Oh hey Peter, you rock too. Bruce does rock. He's he's awesome. So uh, we've gone our half hour. Yeah. And I know you've got to get back to some work or some yes. semblance of work. Yep. Yep. It's, we've got some studios great. we're building. Yep. It's been great having you here. Um, the best place to find you is pretty much what? Uh, MakeAnythingEasy.com? Yeah. MakeAnythingEasy.com um, uh, just has the social like Instagram or just uh, uh, my actually jet ringer. If you go to my tap link, which is Jeff Ettringer on, or my Instagram mm -hmm. uh, is pretty quick. And then that would take you uh, also to my tap link, uh, which would get you to me and all the different emails and phone numbers and stuff. So Instagram's one, the other one is LinkedIn, make anything easy through there. Uh, and uh, yeah, however, yeah. anyone wants to reach out to me, I'd love to help out in any well, way. I can. So yeah. basically, Basically, what the tap link is is a one-stop shop for all of your social media. And you've got your website, you've got oh, your Facebook. Down. Look at that. There's all my different. So there's LinkedIn there. And I think as far as uh, Twitter goes, make anything easier is more popular than your Jeff Entringer uh, channel. Um. Yeah. I. I. I pointed some of it and then I changed it up, Bruce. And I wasn't sure I was like pointing things towards make anything easy at first, but then on clubhouse, I realized, you know, it's about me. It doesn't matter what the brand is that, yep. that make anything easy is one of many companies I have or have had. And so it's more about me just being my authentic self. So I've just built my brand. And I think that's a lesson for people is, is what's changed on clubhouse is, is it's really taking there's clubhouse. Yep, but it's, since it's a uh, iOS app only, yeah, it won't <laughs> open. And if you open that on the phone, though, it'll take okay. you to the app. So that the idea is that if someone is on Instagram on their phone and they're using their phone, and then they click on it here, it will take them through to Clubhouse, and then they can join, and I can send them a uh, uh, invite, so I can help you get onto Clubhouse too. So uh, here and, is the app looks like. There you go. Following. Um, yep. And these, these are the uh, the rooms that are available, and it's a wide variety of rooms. Everything from business to self help to just oh. entertainment. And and when what's so cool, Bruce, is that people you can be your own creator. So um, Snarf Foods can go on, but she'd want to be her authentic self, and then and then you know use the avatar, use her a photo of herself. But then 
in her profile would put about Snarf Foods and then point it towards her own personal Instagram or a mix therein so that then they can go to Snarf Foods or to a tap link. And you just, you talk because you couldn't go on there and go, hi, I'm Snarf Foods. How are you? Like, how are you going to do that? You, you can't right. create a character. I'm Snarf Foods. I'm here to, I mean, or, I'm Snarf Foods. I, I don't know what, <laughs> when people try to get on there for fir the first time and they're not sure what they're doing, they actually created these business names and got on there and they quickly realized and they came to me and are like, Jeff, how do I change this? And so I showed them ways to change everything and update their profiles. So they were no longer branding themselves. There you go. Clubhouse Jeff. Oh, that's so, me. so for the record, you're at 8,900. Oh, oh, almost to 9,000. So I guess by the end of this show, which is ending, ending in three minutes, we need to get you that extra hundred uh, subscribers. Yeah. They, that We'll see. It oh, might wow. hit. Oh my gosh. That's great. Clubhouse Jeff. And then this is Kellen Ann. Oh, hey, Kellen. I think we're talking about, she's planning on moving to Atlanta, which is why I, I brought it oh, up. Oh, yeah. No, I recognize the profile or the photo, I think, too. That might be. And that's why Bruce asked me. And I was like, I don't know if I know the, the person because I don't see their profile photo, which is really important. And when people change it, I, I lose them. I'm like, who is this? Oh, yeah. but I hear their voice. And immediately I know that I know them. Uh, yeah, so it's, talking about social media a bit. Is it's important to have the same name and the same profile picture across all platforms so that when someone looks for you on another platform, they can say, okay, well, I'm coming over from Clubhouse to Instagram. I should be seeing the same person in the same profile. Yeah. And that's where I use David Rams, uh, you know, this awesome photographer and, and they're so, and Pitter is awesome. I've got pictures from her. And so I had first vacillated back and forth, but then everyone kind of picked, no, we want you in the middle of the river. And I thought, okay, well, that's the photo that, that authentic laugh was perfect for it. And it's memorable. And, uh, and people think I'm in a pool or something. They're trying to figure it out and, and then having that everywhere. And so then I put it on all my platforms and then, um, it just, yeah, you're right. It helps out tremendously. Yep. Well, it's been great. Thank you much. Thank uh, you. I'll probably see you on Clubhouse in about, what, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, probably. Um, if you want to do an after show, we can do something over there. Keep yes. talking there. Yeah. And then bring the people over uh, to share. Yeah. Everybody that's on Clubhouse, we'll see you in Clubhouse. We'll open up a room and you can hop in and we can have a discussion there. That way everybody can join. Because that was the other thing too, is on, on these platforms, you're having to read text. So notice I shift my focus and I'm reading text. And then I come back and that's what I was talking about with Loria Petrucci is like, it breaks your concentration because then you're using a different part of your brain to try to figure out that text. Loria is awesome. You're right. Brian. Boy, oh my gosh. How's it going, buddy? And, uh, uh, and, and Fanzo too. He's just yeah. tremendous. So uh, yeah, a lot of these people I met six years ago through Blab. That's so good. And he had and, and that's, how got, that's how I kind of got started with Clubhouse is the first people I followed were the people I knew. Oh. Uh, from from the Blab days. And there was a lot of similarities between Blab and Clubhouse, although Blab was a video platform and, and where Clubhouse is just audio. Yeah. But it did have the separate rooms and it did have this the community. And we just had a, a five-year reunion because me and a guy named uh, Cliff Bodenweiser had a show, a weekly show on Blab. And so we just had our fifth-year reunion just last month. That's awesome. And Fanzo had like Periscope and he was like killing it. He had the biggest mm -hmm. and then poof. And so he yeah. was discussing how you make sure that. And so creating those authentic connections, it's going to transcend everything. It'll transcend all the platforms, everything else, and having a way to contact those people or for them to find you. Yeah. So Bruce, thank you for helping me with that part of it. Um, because I feel like this is something as I wanted to impact a million people but I've been told, no, you need to unpack unlimited amount of people. And actually, negative or positive. Actually, if your scope is too wide, the idea is, do you want to impact one person or a million people one at a time? That's what we did today with Snarf Foods and Bruce. Yeah. Or yeah. Brian. Because, me. Yeah, because impacting a million people is too widespread. Yeah. Um, it's not uh, targeted enough. So I guess if you redefine it as I want to impact a million people one at a time. No, no, it's actually unlimited amount of people. Unlimited? Okay. More. That's why that's, that means it could be 8 billion people. 
<laughs> and I'm fine with that. It's just one at a time. And am I impacting them positively, negatively? I mean, maybe a little bit negatively, or I hope not. But um, if you do it one at a time, authentically, you're right, Bruce. It's it's just huge. And getting this, just getting out there, helping you out, helping you with your stuff and and collaborating with everyone. It's, it's just been so powerful. Um, so people that whatever direction they're going to go, Everyone's changing. It's shifting based on what's going on currently and allowing them to change that direction and, and go to someplace else that they want to go. That's what I've been enjoying most uh, about Clubhouse, about all social media is how do I help those individuals achieve what they want to. And it's going to change. After a while, they'll be like, okay, well, now I'm going to go this direction. Well, then help them again. So. Because you're really extreme lot of help, and then here we got a, a command from uh, from Kellen says end the show and and, and open a clubhouse. <laughs> okay, I guess we're gonna have to go now. We ran a little long, which is yeah. fine with me. So great, uh, thank you much. Thanks again. Oh. This has been fantastic. I, I appreciate you showing up <laughs> and and being here. Um, you're my first uh, celebrity of the year. Oh wow! <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> So uh, let me end with this uh, ending clip. And thanks again. And I, I'm actually in the uh, at the end of the show. We're going to put the links to uh, your YouTube channel. Okay. As well as my YouTube channel. Uh, just click on the button and subscribe to our channels. Um, that's yeah. for YouTube. That's for YouTube. If you're on Facebook or LinkedIn, head on over to my BS VPTV YouTube channel. Absolutely. And I think I have my tap link on my YouTube as well so that they can yep. find it in those little corner. But yeah, you got cool. And you need to update your tap link to your actual custom URL now. I did. And I put it so it'll subscribe. So when you click on it, it'll go right to that. Perfect. Thanks to you. Thank you. It's great. Have a great day. You See too. You. Thank you. See you in Clubhouse. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.